Hello, so today we are going to be talking about graphs. So graphs are a way to show and organize data in a very visual way that's easy to understand. It can often tell us more than words can. They have titles, labels, and a key to help display different information in studies and questions and research. Many people use them very frequently. When you are creating a graph, there are six steps that you are going to take to get to it. So number one is to ask a question of some sort. So this could be a survey or a poll. If you're doing research, there's lots of different ways to ask a question. You could be trying to ask all of your friends what eye color they have or see what their favorite food is. Or you could be trying to figure out how fast the trains go on the L. Figure out what question you wanna ask and the information that you wanna get from that. The second part is to collect the data. So get the answers to your question. Then you're gonna determine your scale and key. And once you have the data, that will become more obvious as to what you should use. Next is to actually graph the data. So you choose what type of chart you're going to use for your information. If it's a pie chart or a bar graph or a scatter plot, whatever type that you think is best, you need to then put the data, the information and the answers onto that graph. Number five is to label the parts. Now this is really important because for many people when they're making graphs, lots of other people are going to be looking at them. You're not just making them for yourself, but even if you are, if you make it and then you go do other things and come back to it, you don't wanna forget what each part of the graph is. You wanna remember the different parts of the graph and if also other people are looking at it, they need to be able to understand what the information is. And number six, and this is a super important step, is to analyze the graph and answer questions. So you're going to look at the graph, see what information you can learn from it, and summarize what you have learned about your question and did you figure out the answer to it? We are going to be talking about four types of graphs today, though there are so many different types, and I'm not even going to begin to brush over even a few of them. We're just gonna be talking about for today that you may be using a lot. The first one is a pictograph and pictographs use pictures and symbols to show the value of data. The second one is bar graphs and these often display or compare different sets of information. Next is a pie chart. Yes, like a pie. And this shows parts of a whole. So when you're learning about fractions, you may remember seeing a circle and cutting it into four pieces and talking about how each piece is a fourth. Same type of concept, parts of a whole. And line graphs is the last one we're gonna be talking about and that often shows change over time. So here are just some very quick examples of these four types of graphs. When we are doing a graph analysis, so when we're looking at a graph and we're trying to understand it and get more information from it, there are a couple of questions that we wanna ask ourselves in looking at it. The first thing is, what can we learn by looking at this graph? What information is on the graph from the titles and labels to the actual data itself? The second question is, why did they use this graph or chart to display the data? Why did they use this particular one versus another one? What is the purpose of using this graph and how can that help us learn more? So to teach you more about graphs, I decided to poll people in my community, my friends and family, to ask them different questions so that I could use real information and put it on different types of graphs for you. So first is the pictograph. As I said before, pictographs use pictures and symbols to show data value. So for my pictograph, I decided to ask the question, which type of peanut butter is better, creamy or crunchy? I know this is a big, big question. So with my pictograph, you can see that at the top, I have my categories of the types of peanut butter, creamy peanut butter and crunchy peanut butter, and then the column that says the number of votes. And I decided to show votes, the symbol or picture that I use to show is this peanuts emoji and I showed that a full emoji is equal to two votes and then half of the emoji is equal to one vote. So you can use this key of the emoji and that it's equal to two votes and half is equal to one, that's just what I chose, 
to see how many votes there are. So if you look at creamy peanut butter, there should be 38 votes in total. And for crunchy peanut butter, there were seven votes, which shows, of course, that creamy peanut butter won in my poll, which I'm not saying that creamy peanut butter is the best, but I'm not not saying that is the bar graph. And as I said, the bar graph displays and compares sets of numerical data. Um, I chose to ask the question, if you could have any one superpower, what would it be? And for this one, I had people kind of write in what superpowers they would want. Teleportation, which is like being able to fly or transport yourself to different places, got the most votes, it got seven votes. Telepathy, like reading people's minds, got three votes. Invisibility also got three votes, so those tie, and you can see that because the bars are the same height. Uh, chronokinesis, which is being able to control things with your mind, manipulate things with your mind, got two votes, and other answers, so answers that didn't fit into those categories got two votes. So by looking at this, bar graph and thinking, what can we learn about this? Well, just in the people that I asked, you can see that teleportation is the most popular choice as the one superpower that you might have. And if we're thinking about our second question, why did I choose this graph? Well, I know that I chose it because I wanted to see how different superpowers would compare. If more people would want invisibility versus flying versus mind control, all these different things, I wanted to be able to see the different sizes of the bars on the graph to tell us which is more popular. So for our next graph, we are looking at the pie chart and this shows parts of a whole. So for this question, I decided to ask, would a dinosaur or a dragon make a better pet? And you can see without even looking at the percentages that just by looking at the chart that they look pretty even. They're not quite exactly the same, the circle's not exactly cut to half, but it is really close. And when you look at the percentages, it confirms that. 51% of people voted for dinosaurs and 49% of people voted dragons. 21 votes dinosaur, 20 votes dragon. Let's think about our first question. What can we learn by looking at this graph? And I think the obvious thing is that the same amount of people or a very similar amount of people think that both dragons and dinosaurs could make a good pet. Second question is, so why do we choose to use a pie chart? Well, honestly, in asking this question, I wasn't really sure who would win or how much it would win by. And I thought that because I was just choosing between two choices, you would really be able to see it in a circle and be able to see the parts of well, just how much. And I think it landed up being a really good choice, especially because the results are so even, you can see just how close they were. Just in looking at the pie chart in the circle, they're so close to being half and half. And if you look at the votes, it was only one more vote that voted for dinosaurs. And finally is the line graph. And as I said before, line graphs we often use to show change over time. So for this one, I did not ask this question to the community. I decided to go and do some research on my own. So there are three different lines on the line graph and you can see that they're labeled in the bottom. So the yellowy orange line shows the rainfall in inches. The pinky red line shows the high temperature because if we think about temperatures every day, they tell us a high and a low, and that's in degrees Fahrenheit. And then the blue line that's kind of in the middle shows the low temperatures also in Fahrenheit. And I wanted to show month by month, the rainfall, the highs and the lows. So what can we learn? It starts at January and ends at December. You can tell just by looking at the months how the temperature goes. It does tell us that June, July, and August are absolutely, especially July and August, the hottest points of the year, and that the coldest parts are December, January, and February. So we're able to learn a lot about the temperatures and the rain in that time. I hope that you are able to take this information and think about questions that you've asked, graphs that you've seen. Ask yourself, what can I learn from this graph? And why did the person who created this graph choose to do it in this way? Thank you so much.